How's it going guys? So in today's Blender tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create this abstract motion graphics loop. This is a really fun one and there's a lot to get from it. So first we're gonna be modeling the curves within geometry nodes and then adding some extrusion and displacement to give them the shape and the motion that we want. I'm also gonna show you a simple node that's gonna allow you to manipulate textures within geometry nodes to not make them so obvious, not so noise texture-y looking, if you know what I mean. After that, we're gonna use the new principled node because it has some really easy subsurface controls to make these materials look really nice and a simple lighting setup to finish it off. A lot of really cool things here. Now, if you wanna grab the project file for this animation, that is available on Patreon right now. Along with that, I've already started uploading this month's tutorial series where I'm showing you how you can use Blender to make really really awesome music visualizers where not only are things being audio reactive, but I'm also showing you how to create real audio spectrums within Blender and then use those to manipulate other things. It's a really fun project, so much content there. With that being said, let's get into the tutorial. All right, so we're gonna be starting in a blank document here and I'm just gonna hit Shift A and add a plane just to get some geometry going so we can add it into geometry nodes. So now let's go ahead and head over to the Geometry Nodes workspace. And I'm gonna go and kill that window right there. I'm gonna click new. And we're gonna start out with a mesh line. So search M-E-S-H. In the new Blender 4.0, you actually don't need to click search. You can just hit shift A and type in M-E-S-H. And that's gonna give you a mesh line and we'll plop it right there. Now we need to be able to, he's shooting up, we want him to rotate down. So we need to get a transform geometry node. So transform geometry, and we're gonna rotate it on the Y by 90 degrees. And then we're gonna right here, we're gonna do negative four, negative 4.5 to get it back in the middle. Now notice this count right here, that's 10. There's 10 points on this line. So we wanna instance some Bezier curves right here on all of those points. So we're gonna get a instance on points here. So instance on points, and then we're gonna go and get in a quadratic Bezier, and then uh, we're gonna bring him up, and then we're gonna put him here, just so we can see a nice line. Plug that into instance, and you're gonna get all of these guys here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag on all of these and type in zero. On this top one, we're gonna do negative five, and this bottom one here, we're gonna do five. And then right here, we're gonna rotate it on the Z by 90 degrees to get our lines. The next thing we need to do is add some geometry. So first, what we need to do is to realize instances, and that's gonna allow us to do some displacement, and then we're gonna get in a curve to mesh. We'll add our curve to mesh, and then we need to get a, a curve line. So curve line right here. And if you want them to not be flat but round, you would do a curve circle. That way you can kind of make this design your own if you don't wanna follow exactly what I'm doing. And we'll plug curve right into profile curve right here on the, the uh, Z, make that zero and on the X, you can define how wide you want yours to be. And then we can go ahead and in the modifiers right over here, let's get a solidify. And then we're gonna extrude that up a little bit and you can see it's kind of ugly and smoothed out, but that's okay because we need to now get in a bevel node. And then we can make them, you know, make it round if you'd like. I want, you know, I don't want it to be like relatively sharp corners, but more of a round side. And I'm gonna give it four on the uh, segments and then, you know, we can get it round like that. I really like that style. This is completely up to you though, whatever you like it to be. Now what I'm gonna do is add more things. Now, if you're not used to using geometry nodes, you're like, where are all my nodes? You need to go and click on the geometry nodes modifier and that will reveal them all back to you. So if you touch this one or touch this one, they're gonna disappear. Just go back and click on that one. So right behind this Realize Instances node, I'm gonna go ahead and hit G to move those, highlight and hit G, and then we're gonna get in a set position. And uh, that's gonna allow us to add some displacement, but first let me go ahead and add more of these guys to make it look cool. So here on the Mesh Line node, right at the end, where it says Z of one, just bring and bring them close to each other, you know, however much gap you want, this is totally up to you. And then I'm gonna give myself a count of uh, 30 and big fan of that, so we're gonna run with it. Now let's go back and displace this thing. So on set position, let's go ahead and get a combine XYZ, plug the vector into the offset, and then let's go ahead and get in a noise texture. Plug the noise texture into the Z. Now, if you wanna know why we use the combine XYZ, if I plug the noise texture just into the offset, it's going to, see that? You can see the floor here. 
See what it did there? Take it off, put it back on. It's not gonna displace it correctly and I really want it to only displace up and down. This combined X, Y, Z is gonna allow me to specify I just want to displace it on the Z axis and that looks really cool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get in a color ramp to be able to control how that's going to look. I'm gonna go from 3D to 4D and this is gonna be where we actually animate what we have going on. I'm gonna bring my color ramp in to show you something uh, important style-wise. So I'm gonna bring it to right about there and then right up here on the quadratic bezier, this is essentially your subdivision. I'm gonna give it 100 just to demonstrate this. So let's see how it looks bad. Let's go ahead and bring our detail to zero and then our scale to 0.4, that'll be kind of what we're working with. So see how dramatically it juts up right there? And it might not seem that dramatic until we go from linear to ease. Now it is a perfect slope. So we'll go back to linear, which is the default. See how that looks? We go to ease. It is a slightly smoother gradient within the color ramp and it just looks more aesthetically pleasing to me. Um, you can do whatever you'd like. You can even go crazy with it and do a B spline and really make it smooth. Uh, I'm gonna stick with ease. That's what I personally prefer, but you can do whatever you want. Now, to me, this is very obviously noise texture looking and the hills and stuff. I actually want to squish in my noise texture. Of course, there is no texture coordinate node uh, and mapping node within geometry nodes. You kind of have to do it yourself. Uh, in this case, we're going to get a math node, and we're only going to use one here. Uh, we're really going to use two, but one over there later. Um, we're going to get a vector math. This was the wrong one. So shift A, type in VEC, vector math, and then we just need to use divide, and then plug that into vector, and then we need to get a position node. So this is kind of a rule of thumb. If you want to manipulate your textures within Blender, one is gonna be back to default. If you wanna manipulate your textures in Blender, get a divide node, and that is gonna allow you, right here in this top one, to squish it in or stretch it out. And that is gonna work on the, this is essentially your X, Y, and Z coordinates with divide. Uh, these are very simple operations here. If you wanna do a multiply, then that would just uh, you know multiply it. So divide is just to me means manipulate or stretch or squash in this context. And so when now that when I bring in the color ramp, squish it in, it's still a texture, it's still a noise texture, but it really agrees with the fact that these lines are going up and down and it's it looks more natural, looks more intentional to me in terms of design. Uh, this is more of a design uh, technique here rather than sort of a technical thing, but I think it looks just much better. I really like the way that looks. It makes it look more stringy. Um, now, if you want to increase the strength of your displacement or make it less, we'll get one more vector math node over here. We'll get our vector math, place it right here, and we're gonna go to multiply. And then this is going to multiply whatever is happening to it. So that's the easiest way to remember it. And then you can get a value node so you don't have to click and drag every time. Just plug that there. And then that is your strength, essentially. So very simple vector math. I am not good at math nodes in here, but the, these simple operators right here, I kind of figured those out. <laughs> and they're very simple to use, uh, especially here in geometry nodes. They really help you out a lot. Uh, so this is the whole set up to get this to work properly. So now let's go ahead and get a mesh plane. Let's get a new plane here, just place it right about there and then make sure it's not touching. So let's go ahead and bring him just slightly down. All right, so now we have this. I'm gonna go ahead and get my camera going. So camera, go right about here, control alt zero, snap it to view. And in my case, I wanna use orthographic. Uh, perspective is cool, looks fine. Uh, but I'm a big fan of doing orthographic when I'm using this angle. So click on the little camera green icon here and switch over to orthographic and then bring your orthographic scale back and you can have a little bit of fun and it'll allow us to see that uh, wooden texture that we're gonna use in just a minute. Speaking of a wooden texture, go over to ambientcg.com and search up wood. These are all completely free materials and go ahead and pick whatever one you want. I ended up liking this one right here, the Painted Wood 007C. I like the lighter color and go ahead and download the 4K PNG. Now, if you are a real-time materials user, 
you already have a bunch of nice wood materials right here. So you can select probably this one or this one that might be the best, or you can get some planks, um, but this is all available to you right now. And you can check out the add-on uh, in the description if you have never heard of real-time materials. Bunch of really cool stuff there if you wanna check it out. Now we can go, now we can head on to the lighting portion. So click on your cycles preview. You can use EV if you'd like, but it won't uh, work quite as nicely, but it, you could still follow along or do your own materials here. So we're gonna go ahead and get a really big area light. I'm gonna hit G and move it right here. And we want the area light to just point directly down. I hit R twice to point it. And then we're gonna go ahead and change it over to a disc scale it up really big, and then we're gonna go ahead and bring that power to like 8,000 for now. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this plane here. I'm gonna hit Shift D, and then I'm gonna hit R twice to, actually, yeah, R twice to point it. And this will be a bouncing box for our uh, light here, so we can get some reflections and some light bouncing back on it. Uh, this is something I taught in a tutorial recently, and I really love the technique. So now we have some nice lighting going on. Let's go ahead and get a subsurf material for our little strings, our noodles. Uh, so we'll go back here to geometry nodes and get one particular node that we need, which is a set material. We'll go over here to the material button, click new, and then we can go ahead and select that material. So we're gonna go back here to this, and then I'm gonna go ahead and click on my noodles, go to the material, and then right here on uh, subsurface, bring that weight all the way up, and then I'm gonna give it a pink color. Thought that really looked the best. And then one really cool thing that I love about the new update is this scale. So if you bring the scale up, it's gonna tell it how much light is gonna be able to penetrate your new material. So if you just do zero, it's not subsurf whatsoever. And but the, that more scale, the deeper the light is allowed to penetrate this material, which gives you this really beautiful look. And that's the light coming right through it. And I love it. It's much easier uh, than the old method. So really big fan of this. Now let's go ahead and add in the wood material here on this bottom plane. So we'll head over to the shading tab. And then I'm just gonna kill these two windows here. I'm gonna click new. And then with that Node Wrangler add-on enabled, uh, we're gonna hit Control T, which is gonna get us an image texture, a mapping, and a texture coordinate. And it's pretty much already unwrapped for us. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and open up, go ahead and open up that texture file. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the color. Looks really nice. And then I'm gonna just bring this up a little bit. Then you can use G to move things around. I'm gonna hit sh Control, Shift, D. And then I'm gonna click this number two. We're gonna go ahead and grab our roughness and we are going to use non-color and plug that into the roughness. Let's go ahead and get in a normal map. Plug normal into normal. And then again, control shift D. Click the number two, grab the normal and plug that into color. Now we can go back to cycles to see how this is looking. It's looking really awesome. You can bring the strength down of your normal if you would like to. Uh, on this plane here, one really cool trick is you can click new, give it a new material, and then on the base color, see where it says value? Bring your value up to like five and that's gonna reflect even more light. Uh, it's, it, you're, you're faking sort of an exaggerated um, bouncing box, but it allows you to not have to get in another light if you want to have more control there. Uh, we can take this light here and maybe bring up to maybe 10,000 on the brightness. And now we're at the point of the tutorial where it starts to be more preference. How do you want it to look? So let's go ahead and animate this really quick and then we can just kind of polish it up and finish. So let's head back into geometry nodes and loop this animation. Now, when I finish this tutorial here, I'm gonna bump this resolution up to 200 just to make it perfectly smooth. But for now, we're just gonna go to a resolution of 20 so we can see the animation in real time. So let's go ahead and create a looping noise texture here. So the way that works is we're gonna go ahead and duplicate the noise texture. Make sure you plug your mapping into it and we're gonna get in a mix color node. Plug that there and then plug him here. These guys need to be exactly 
the same. Uh, on the W, bring them both to a W of zero. The W is what we're going to be looping now. So let's go ahead and right here in this W, make sure first off in your preferences, in the animation tab, your default interpolation here is linear. I keep mine there by default. So feel free to do that if you like making loops. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, hover over in the timeline, hit the back arrow to frame zero, hit I in the W, bring my factor here over to the left, hit I, and then I'm using 250 frames, specify however many frames you want. We're gonna go to the end, and then I'm gonna type in a seven I, and then drag it over, hit I. And then now on the lower one, stay at 250 or wherever the end of your timeline is, hit I, go to the end, hit the back arrow to frame zero, and then because this one was set to positive seven, we're gonna do negative seven on this one, and now you're gonna get an animation. Let me see if it's real time, yes. So if you want it to be quicker, which honestly I do, I do want it to be quicker, I'm gonna do, let's do 12 just to be crazy with it. 12, go back, negative 12, I, and now it's gonna be a quicker animation. And then I'm gonna bring my resolution to 100, and I want my strength to be a bit more dramatic on this. I really want it to look a little, little different. So there we go. And now we can go back here to our timeline, and then you can click around and see how is it going to look. Um, looks great. On my camera, I'm gonna zoom it in a little bit make it look cool. You can also add some depth of field here if you'd like. Um, and then in your color preferences, I put mine at AGX and punchy. And then I'm just gonna bring up the brightness a little bit and then bring my gamma down just to start to encourage a little bit of contrast into this animation. And let's go ahead and finish this render. I'm gonna keep mine at 1920 by 1080. Um, I'm gonna give it 150 samples. And we are also going to denoise it because it is subsurf it is very prone to being noisy. So in the compositor, we're gonna go ahead and set up our denoiser. So shift A and get in a viewer node. I'm gonna hold down shift and right click to make sure everything goes into the composite and the viewer. And then we're gonna get in a denoise and then plug in the denoising normal, the denoising albedo, and that's gonna allow you to have some denoising and then let me go ahead and just render one frame to see how this looks as a final piece. And there we go. This is the final piece. Uh, what I would do is post-processing is add some contrast, boost those highlights, boost those dark portions, and really make it look like it pops. Um, never neglect your post-processing. Uh, but this is how you do it. What I would do is I would encourage you to export it out as a PNG sequence. Just go ahead and specify your file. But if you just want an MP4 uh, Blender to compile that for you, you can go FFmpeg video, encoding to MP4, and then medium quality to perceptually lossless, render, render animation. And when you're done, you'll have something really cool like mine. Um, with that being said, that's it. That's the tutorial. It's been a been a minute since I've done one of these step-by-step -step tutorials and I really love this one. Again, if you want to check out that whole audio visualizer series that I'm doing right now on Patreon, feel free to check that out linked in the description. There's also free memberships on my channel as well and it's a really great way to support my channel. Uh, with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.